Hi, this is Steve Fabian. We're going to continue our series. Today we're talking about Knockout JS and uh, data binding and MVVM style development. So, so far we use the uh, technology template. We've created a project uh, called To Do List. Uh, last um, video we talked about the entity data model using Entity Framework and we created uh, two entities a to do list item and a to do list status. And uh, the template comes with a pre configured WCF data service to expose all of the items um, in those entity collections. We use the uh, entity framework to create the tables in our .NET Nuke database. And if we browse to our WCF data service, right, we can see those entities. I added some data in there just uh, so that we can kind of take a look and see how, uh, you know, as we're working with this. So uh, if you browse to to do list status, Right, and actually get back the data. So in this case, there's uh, four records in the status table. Each one has a, an ID and a status. Um, so in addition to being able to browse to the WCF data service, you can browse to an entity collection and get all the data from the database. Um, but you can do additional things as well here. Um, do things like selection filtering or, or sorting. Um, if I want to grab just one particular record, if I want to grab the status with an ID of two, I can do that and just get that one record back. Um, if I want to do the same thing, I want to get a to-do list item with uh, an ID of one. Oops, items, plural. Okay, I just get back that one record. So I got a couple of records in each of these tables just so that we can start, uh, when we start writing the code, we can actually see some data coming back. Okay, um, so with that, let's go back and now let's start doing our MVVM style development using Knockout JS. So there's three components to MVVM. There's the models, which are your business objects. Um, your view, which is your all your UI markup, all the everything that the user sees, and then in between the two, you have your view model. And the view model does most of the work. Um, it's responsible for retrieving the data from the data store. So our view model is going to use our WCF data service to retrieve data from our database tables through the entity framework. It's then going to create our business models from that data. So it's going to create a business model for for the data that we get from our database, and then create our view model. We create properties of our view model, and then use Knockout to data bind those view model properties to UI elements. And two-way data binding means that once we use Knockout to establish that mapping between view model properties and UI properties, if either one of those change on either side, either the user makes a change in the UI to update the property of the UI, uh, Knockout will automatically update the corresponding value of the property bound to that UI element. So we don't have to write code. Uh, once we get our view model, um, we establish the uh, data binding. Uh, once we set up our view model properties and then set values to them, our UI gets updated automatically. If the user makes a change in the UI, our Knockout will up automatically update our view model properties. So we don't write any of that code to move stuff into the UI elements, like setting text box values or set, you know, f um, uh, setting values in list boxes. And we don't have to worry about on the back end if, when the user clicks the submit button or some other button to trigger some function on the back end uh, in the in the uh, our back end script. We don't have to reference any of the UI elements, our, our uh, view model property is already updated with everything that matches the UI. So it saves us from writing an awful lot of code. Okay, So let's start. We'll create our models. I'm going to create a JavaScript file in the models folder, and I'm going to name it the same as my view, just so everything gets named the same. Same name for the model, same name for the view, same name for the view model. And so you, so you don't have to watch me type too much. I've got some text snippets in here, so we'll grab our model. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're creating um, two business models, uh, uh, a to-do list item model and a to-do list status model. These correspond to our entities. And then uh, we're going to use Knockout. We're going to create, that's, KO is, the, uh, is Knockout. So what we're doing is we're going to create a new instance, use this function to create a new business model of a to-do list item. We're going to pass in an entity as a, in the constructor. So we're going to retrieve the data through the WCF data service, then we're going to iterate through the records, and we're going to create business models for each record. And when we do that, we're going to pass that entity uh, into the constructor for the business model. We're going to then create dynamic properties for our business model. So ID, module ID, created date, task, and person, these all relate one-to-one -to, -one to the properties of our entity. We're going to then set them and tell Knockout that this is an observable property. This tells Knockout that we're going to do two-way data binding. So uh, we want you to create a mapping between this model and whatever UI element I bind it to. And then we're going to initialize its value to the um, pr property entity property with the name ID. So we pass in an, a record from the database that we're going to get 
through the WCF data service. We create a business model. In this case, first it's going to create a property in the business model called ID. It's going to initialize it with the ID property from the record from the database and tell Knockout, keep an eye on it. This is an observable property, and we're going to use it in two-way data binding. Then we do the same thing for the module ID, create a date, task, and person. Now, status, slightly different. Um, the entity which is our to-do list item, doesn't have a property called status. You remember that's an associated value in another table. So I actually have to do to-do list status dot status. So we're going to flatten out our business model. This is, this is where we get to do some manipulation to make the UI and the data mapping uh, and the code we write a little simpler. We have a complex relationship in our data, data entity model where we have two tables. And once I have an, an a list item, I have to, to get the associated record in the to-do to list status table to get the status for that item. Um, but when I'll show you when we retrieve it through the WCF data service, we're, gonna, we're going to retrieve that associated record as well, and that's going to come in as, as a uh, property on the entity as, called to-do list status, and that entity has a status property. So we're going to take that and set that and create a status property directly on our business model, even though there isn't one on our uh, entity. Okay, So we're just flattening that out a little bit. Status, simple, we just create the entity. It's just a one-to-one -one mapping. We have two properties, ID and status, and we're going to create them as knockout observables and set them, initially uh, uh, initialize them to the ID and status properties of the uh, data entity that we pass in during construction. Okay, So that's these are the functions necessary to create our models. So now we'll go look at our view model. Once again, uh, I'll bring in a code snippet here for our view model. <clears throat> a little more complicated, but still, there's not a lot of code here. When you see what this does, I think you'll be uh, pretty impressed in, in what we can accomplish with very little uh, code. So we're going to create a view model. So we're going to create a view model for this particular view. And we're going to establish two collections. We're actually not using this one right now. Um, uh, so I'll just take it out, just keep things simple. Okay. So we're going to create a collection. Uh, so we're going to give it a name of to-do list items and we're telling Knockout this is an observable array. So this is creating a new property of our view model and we're telling Knockout it's an, observ an observable array. We're initializing it to empty. So this is going to contain a collection of objects and Knockout is going to keep an eye on those. So if we bind this property to a UI element like a, a table, a list box, a drop-down list, which anything, any UI element that can hold a collection, Knockout will will be responsible for moving Moving that data back and forth between those between the two platforms, between the UI and between the view model. So as we add items to the to-do list item collection in our view model, the UI will be updated. If the user were to change that collection on the UI side, if it was like a list box and, and maybe they deleted an item or added a new item, Knockout will automatically update our to-do list item collection on our view model. So that data binding prevents us from having to write all that code. 